Hey, welcome back everybody. So, this is a list that I thought was appropriate to do considering I will soon be starting my fourth or fifth 100 miniature painting challenge. I think as of this recording, I've done 400. So I'm starting my fifth, which would be 500 miniatures. And I started this in like the middle of December, right around the holiday. So it was like a week before Christmas. And this is uh, the end of January. So you're talking about six weeks. I've probably completed uh, 400 miniatures. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing this is because during that period of time, you know, I've had slumps or felt like I had a slump where, you know, I, I wasn't motivated, right? I just, I didn't want to paint that day or I didn't want to do something that day for the hobby. And I had to come up with ways to, you know, kind of push through it and overcome it. Now, you know, obviously at the end of the day, this is just a hobby. These are just toys. So if, you know, you have things going on in your life and you really just can't hobby, then that's, that's, that's its own thing. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Uh, so just keep that in mind because I, I've had periods like that too, where I, I just literally had things going on in my life and I, I couldn't hobby and was not important. Okay. But I mean, if you are, you know, kind of carrying on with your usual thing, trying to get the year off to a good start. I've decided to come up with 10 ways to help you overcome a hobby slump. And these are kind of the things I do. And they usually work pretty well for me. Now, I didn't want to do the old, you know, the normal stuff that you hear a lot of the talking heads say. And, you know, the kind of routine stuff. So these are going to be 10 very unique, at least in my opinion or perspective on them, ways that you can overcome your hobby slump. So I'm going to do 10. I have one bonus one. These are not in any particular order. I just kind of wrote them down as I went. Uh, but, you know, different people will get more or less mileage out of one than the other. And then at the end of this, I'm going to do I'm going to give you three don'ts, three things definitely not to do uh, if you want to overcome a hobby slump. So let's get started. Number one, watch a movie. So this one is kind of a no brainer and maybe somebody's used it before. But what I'm talking about when I say watch a movie is not simply just throw a DVD in and lay back on your couch and say, oh, that was exciting. I'm ready to hobby because that might work for you. But instead, when you're watching a movie, take some notes, right? Take some notes of the movie. If you see a scenery or a background that man, that looks cool. Get a still picture of it. You know, nowadays, if you watch a movie on the Internet, you can pause it and do a screenshot or you can even look up the movie's uh, stills. You know, as websites like IMDb and other sites where you can actually get stills of scenes during a movie. So like recently I was going through some movies and there was this one kind of Asian film where there's like Asian fantasy Kung Fu. But. They had this awesome looking mine where they had like mine carts and it was dark and you had little lighting along the way. And I really, I stopped my, my iPad and I did a, a screenshot of it. So, cause I said, you know what? I would really like to build those mines. And that's happened before when I've watched movies like Clash of the Titans and you see the scenes of, you know, him battling the, uh, uh, I forgot it's like the Minotaur or something like that or the Medusa and then they're in caves and they're on cliffs, you know, take notes of those things, take screenshots of those things. I mean, cause that can spur a very cool project. Another thing to do when you're watching movies, if you want to overcome a slump, write down the character names, right? Look at the weapons they're using, right? See if you can do some conversions and maybe model those weapons. You know, just about every movie has a special blade or a special sword. I remember one movie and I can't remember which one it is now, but the guy had a sword where like he could press a button and the blades would shoot out the literally the whole blade. The sword had like three or four blades, totally impractical, right? But it would probably look cool on a model if you could put a model on there and put three blades in, in the one sword. So, Write down character names. One of the movies I did this once with was 13th Warrior with Antonio Banderas. 
And they had like cool names like Bovi, right? And other names like that. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to make a character named Bovi. So, like I said, watch a movie, but don't just watch the movie. You know, be inspired by the movie. Look for some inspiration. The next thing up is try a new period or genre. All right. Now, this is also something you might hear a lot, but this is kind of a tried and true one. If you are a total fantasy gamer, right, maybe you should try some Western. There's a lot of great companies doing some real cool Western miniatures nowadays, and you can you can really maybe get some old classics. What about horror? You know, everybody grew up with Dracula and Frankenstein and the werewolf and the swamp thing, the mummy. You know, do some horror games. Detective, right? When's the last time you actually played a 1930s, 1920, Roaring Twenties detective movie, I mean game, uh, where you've got the vehicles and you've got the G-men, right? And you've got the bosses and the gangsters. Uh, sports. You know, get go by. There's a lot of cool sports miniature games that you can get out there now or sports clicks or whatever. You know, set up a league, do a schedule, do some sports and heroes, right? With Marvel Crisis Protocol, I'm seeing a lot of that on the Internet now where people are kind of taking a break from some of the fantasy and sci-fi and they're, they're going into the uh, the superheroes. So try a new period or junior. Get out of your comfort spot, right? So don't don't just do something like, oh, I'm going to do World War II or I'm going to do Medievals. You know, try one of these other things, detective, horror, Western, or heroes. Number three, multitask. Now, this is probably my biggest slump breaker that I use. And when I say multitask is divide your week or even your day, you know, depending on, you know, whether you, how much you work and stuff, but uh, divide it up into different tasks. So for example, you know, maybe on, on Mondays, you're going to just base coat and put paint on your figures. On Tuesdays, you're going to cut up and work on some terrain. On Wednesday, you're going to review the rules and take notes for a game you're setting up. And maybe on Thursday or Friday, you're going to build a cool model. Right. So and that's multitasking. And then what happens is if you sit at the table on Monday and like and you really aren't in the mood to base code another 50 grenadiers. All right. Maybe you will grab that terrain that you would normally work on on Tuesday and finish up that farmhouse. Right. And then Monday you would go back to your your grenadiers and vice versa. So multitasking is very huge. I tend to actually have three, four, five things around my table at once. So I'll have a piece of terrain in a partial state of completion. I will have miniatures that need to be primed. I will have miniatures I'm painting and I will have a rule book out that I have maybe purchased and I am looking to review it. And so if I sit at the painting table and I just can't, you know, get to painting, I'll go jump on my bed, grab the rule book and a pen and paper, and I'll break into it and do notes and, you know, maybe do a video. But multitasking is a huge, huge, huge thing you can do to break out of a hobby slump. The fourth thing is go to or attend a convention, right? Now, I'm sure a lot of you do conventions, but I'm just particularly talking about conventions that are going to give you a chance to do your hobby. So don't just go to a convention to walk around and buy stuff is what I'm trying to say. Look at conventions like Origins, Gen Con, PAX Unplugged, Adepticon, Little Wars, Historicon, all of these conventions that actually have game sessions and Play, playing being done. One of the things I love to do during convention season, especially a convention like Gen Con or Origins, where they put out a uh, they put out a uh, a program, is I will go through the program and read the scenarios that are available to play in, and I will actually photocopy some of the scenarios and say, "Oh man, that is a cool scenario idea." I'm going to set that scenario up at home or I'm going to go to this convention and I'm going to play in this game or at least go visit the table and I'm going to see if I can use that scenario, like a, a little bighorn scenario, for example, or a, you know, a rough rider scenario, just things you probably don't think of a lot, right? A mobile infantry scenario. So 
go to a convention. Like if you are in a slump and you're kind of doing the same stuff and, you know, you're going to the hobby club every, every week and it's the same set them up and, you know, push them, push your miniatures against each other and roll dice, you know, go to a con convention, even a local small convention, you know, and look at some of the creative scenarios and use that to inspire you. You know, and if you do game at a club, go there and say, hey, guy, you know, let's let's do a scenario tonight. Let's let's do something asymmetric. I will play the weaker side or I will play the side with less resources. But, you know, here's the rules. So that might help you and maybe it'll help them, too, if, they, if they've been in a slump or they feel like they're in a rut. So definitely look into some local conventions. Don't wait till the big conventions roll around. Don't wait till... August to go to Gen Con or June to go to Origin. Look around you, stop by your hobby store, see if there's flyers and programs and find some of these little conventions where you can go in there, you know, and find some inspiration from your hobby and share in uh, other people who are enjoying their hobby. Number five, explore your collection. Now, this is one I really like. What I mean by explore your collection is... Go back through your old models, go back through your old game rules, go back through your old terrain and really kind of look at what you got. Because a lot of us are surprised, uh, you know, when we get into a project or something and then we realize, you know, I already had one of those. Or we, we go to a convention and we see somebody using something and say, oh, I got one of them at home. You know, I got that. Right. How many times have you went to a convention and said that to somebody or someone's come up to you or up to a table you were at and say, oh, I got that at home. Now, you notice they never say, well, I played a scenario with that or I used that in a scenario. They just say, I got that. Right. And that's the old classic. They bought something and they stuck it on a shelf and it's been there for years and years and years. And I'm going to tie this in with another one of my suggestions. But in particular with this suggestion, get into your boxes, get into your books, your figures, your accessories. Just dig in. Spend a weekend. Say, you know what, this weekend I'm going to go through and explore my collection. Find that old piece of terrain from foreground that you've never built. Find that resin miniature that you've been putting off putting together. Find those accessories, those those little markers and hit dice and scales and rulers that you've never used and say, you know what, I'm going to use this. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to sit this on my table in my face. And this is something I'm going to pick up and use, you know, before the week is out or before the month is out. So definitely explore your collection is number five. And you know, matter of fact, I will give you an example of, of what I'm talking about. How many times have you went to a convention and you've seen a, a, a a C scenario set up and one of the guys is using one of these Lego or mega block ships, just these huge ships. And the first thing somebody says is, Oh, I got that ship at home. And sometimes it's even you, you might have one of them. So like I said, explore your collection. If you've got one of the mega block ships, maybe this is the weekend you put it together and you, you know, you put together a crew for it. Number six, change your settings. So this is one I don't get to do as much as I would like, but I have done it in the past and man, it works wonders. And what I mean by change your settings is if you tend to paint a lot, but you paint every day in your basement or you paint, you know, every day, you know, in a corner of your home, change your settings, right? Maybe you bring your painting up and just a few figures and, you know, paint at your dining room table while everyone is working and cleaning and if you got family or a wife and they're cooking in the kitchen and you're sitting at the dining room table painting take it to the hobby store right if you don't spend time at your hobby store but they let people come in and paint try it one day you know what you may actually enjoy it just sitting there painting at the hobby store take it to work you know if you have a lunch or a break you know maybe you have a car game or maybe you have you want to work on an army list Bring it to work, you know, take it in the lunchroom or the break room, you know, and put together an army list that you can, you know, you can run a game with, you know, and all you need is a pen and a book, right? And most people, they will see these rule books, they just look like, you know, magazines to them. Uh, now, this is a very good idea if you're, you know, if you're not pinched for cash, right? You know, if you got decent cash, check into a hotel room, right? There's probably 
some very nice hotels in your area, which a lot of times locally, say you check in on a Thursday, and if you know if you're if you're single like I am, uh, you know, say you you check into the hotel room on Thursday for sixty bucks. You know, at a comfort inn or residence inn, kind of a nice place, right? We're not talking about these hotel rooms where you pull up your car in the back and you got to walk up the back stairs. No, I'm talking about the one that has a lobby. It has coffee made for you. You know, it may have a a, a little uh, break room or reading room. You know, a pool or lounge area. Check in the one of them. Spend the sixty bucks. Bring you some miniatures. Bring you a model to put together. Go up in your room, you know, watch that movie and take some notes. Then go down and sit in the lobby and get you some free coffee and just work on stuff. But that change of setting can be exactly what you need to really appreciate your hobby a little more. Number seven, co-op some friends and family. Now, like I said, I'm going to give you guys things that most people aren't going to give you in their list. Okay. Okay. And what I mean by co-op friends and family is, you know, if you have children, if you're married and have a wife, if you have parents, you know, use your children to help you paint, right? Pull aside some miniatures or some terrain and say, you know what, you know, my kids could paint this, right? This is all mostly, you know, browns and blues, right? And then, you know, grab your kids one day after school and tell them, hey, guys, you know, we're going to do something different today. Right. Or else tell them, hey, I'm, I'll pay you guys if you can paint this and stay in the lines. You know, I'm going to give you that money to go to the movies. or I'm going to give you that money to go to the mall. Right. What about your wife, for example? Right. Maybe you will sit up somewhere with your wife and uh, you'll have your wife. Maybe she'll help you read a rule book or go through a rule book with her. Or you asked her about a rule like, you know, hey, this says this. What do you think this rule book means? Right. Or just maybe even just a novel. Right. Maybe you will buy a novel and ask your wife, hey, this is a good novel. You know, why don't you read it? Let me know what you think of it. Right. But what all I'm trying to do is co-op your friends and family. If you're on the phone with your parents. Right. And they're older or whatever. And, you you know, you like to call them every week and check on them. Call them one day before you start a game or set up some terrain and say, hey, mom, how you doing today? And, you know, when right before you get off the phone, say, mom, give me a random number from one to three. And she said, what? Yeah, just give me any number. And she said, okay, two. And you say, okay. And then you say, okay, mom, you know, tell me, you know, uh, choose north or south. Uh, South, right? And so maybe you can have her just sit up there and give you the plans for an opposing army if you play solo, right? Or where terrain is going to go on the board. You know, she wrote a two. She wants it in spot two. So, like I said, co-op your friends and family. And, I mean, it could be a fun thing that you could start, you know, like I said, with your parents or with your wife or somewhere where you kind of co-op them into, you know, into your hobby, right? You just you just get more people involved. Number eight, get rid of some stuff. Now, what this basically involves is simply... You know, looking at your collection, like I told you before, when you explore your collection, maybe you just need to start getting rid of things. You know, a lot of times I think we lose our our desire to hobby is because we start to look around and realize we have just too much stuff. Right. Sometimes you can get overwhelmed and then other times you just have a legitimate feeling of guilt that you've just got way too much stuff that you know you're never going to use, you're never going to paint, you're never going to unbox. So, hey, sell some stuff, you know, put stuff up for eBay, donate some stuff, right? If you have a library that that that, that takes games in or you have a church that, that takes board games or terrain or, you know, kids or a school or anyway, or just throw it out, right? At the end of the day, if, if it's some old piece of thing that you thought was going to be worth something and it's still not worth anything, you know, maybe it's time just to throw it away and get rid of it. But getting rid of stuff, kind of clearing out things and narrowing things will sometimes allow you to kind of appreciate even more 
the things you have left to kind of narrow your focus more and say, okay, I have a nice core of fantasy miniatures. I have a nice core of World War II miniatures. You know, I, now I want to get this nice core of Western miniatures, right? And that's kind of what I'm in the process of doing now. One of my hobby goals this year was to get rid of 500 miniatures. And I don't have any any particular miniatures in mind. I just look around and say, I've got too many miniatures. So I'm going to start going through my collection, slowly looking at older miniatures that, you know, I might have thought, you know, were probably uh, the standard during their day and age, but they just haven't aged well. So that is something you can do that would actually kind of just purge, purge your, your, uh, your queue, and then you can kind of refill it with kind of new, fresh, exciting things for the hobby. Number nine, organize your collection. Now, this is different from exploring your collection because with exploring your collection, your primary purpose is really just to get in and see what you got, right? And why you haven't been using it or how you can use it differently. With organizing your collection, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your miniatures, for example, maybe buy you a shelf. Right. That you can you can put all your miniatures on a shelf. Maybe you've been meaning to get a shadow box uh, display put together. Maybe you're going to build a display for an army, whether it's a 40K or a, a boat action army. So you you've always been meaning to build your own display board. Well, go ahead and organize that and build that, you know, repack some stuff. You know, maybe you've got just purchases lying all over the place in boxes organized according to when you purchased it which isn't very helpful you know, oh yeah that's the stuff i got last last august at gen con i haven't got to it yet well get to it break the stuff out and reorganize it and say okay here's all my my western stuff here's all my modern stuff here's all my fantasy stuff or here's all my board games here's all my miniatures and here's all my rules so just the act of going through and reorganizing your stuff again will remind you of what you got make you think about why you got it and it will probably spur one or two of the other things on the list getting rid of some of it exploring some of it or using it in different ways you know, or finding ways to get, you know, other people involved with your hobby using it. So organizing your collection is something I tend to do very regularly, especially when I'm kind of tired late at night, if I don't really feel like painting or, but I'm not quite sleepy enough to go to bed. You know, I will go into my collection and open up, uh, you know, some of my uh, storage containers and I will say, you know what, I'm going to get all of these guys out of here and, you know, I'm going to uh, sit them over here on this table, right? Because I'm going to be rebasing these guys or I'm going to be uh, improving their coat, right? And that is another thing you can do is, uh, you know, miniature rescues. Those are very popular now where you get your older miniatures that need a fresh coat of paint or a new base and you rescue them. So that's part of what you can do when it comes to organizing your collection is go through and do do you know set aside some miniatures that you think are in need of a miniature rescue. Okay? So again, you're just looking at different ways to still be hobbying without necessarily sitting there painting 8, 9, 10 hours a day day after day. And that brings us to number 10. And again, folks, like I said, these are in no particular order. So, you know, you may prefer one through three or you may prefer seven through 10. But hopefully one of these will will kind of turn on a light, you know, in your hobby head. Number 10 is do some crossovers. And basically what I mean by crossovers is, you know, learn how to take one game and use it to catapult you or springboard you into another game. So maybe you will play a game of boat action with you play a small action of a platoon or a couple of platoons taking a town. And that will springboard you into a game of flames of war where you have divisions of tanks right or companies of tanks you know battling over a strategic area and whoever captured the town is decide gets decided aboard with all of the terrain and cover on it 
Whereas the other side, which is the attackers, the only cover they're going to be having are, are going to be, you know, improvised man works and things that they've they've brought with them. So you can do crossovers, for example, like I said, with Flames of War and Boat Action, Frostgrave and Ghost Archipelago and Rangers of Shadow Deep. You can do a crossover with D and D and Warhammer, right? And there's a lot of other crossovers out there that you can do depending on, on what you play, right? If you play a game like uh course base, you know, you can do a crossover with uh uh battle systems terrain or uh dungeon saga, right? Not dungeon saga, I'm sorry. Um I think it's what is it called? Uh Space Saga, the one the Mantic Mantic Space game, right? But you could do a crossover between that game and a crossover between uh, the game that Battle System does, which I think is called Court Space. You could do a crossover between uh, between uh, is it Star Saga? I think it's Star Saga and uh, Zombie Side Invaders, right? <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make is, you know, crossovers are an excellent way to get you out of a hobby slump by taking maybe a uh, taking maybe a, a, a set of rules or a bunch of miniatures and things that you've kind of put way too much time in and using them to get some other miniatures or game rules or material out and playing and using that you haven't put enough time in, right? And so you want to look at doing those types of crossovers. And so that is your 10... 10... 10 ways I would uh, suggest to overcome a hobby slump. Now, I told you guys at the beginning I was going to give you three don'ts, right? And these are the three things I, I think you should absolutely never do when you get into a hobby slump. And these are going to be somewhat in order, okay? And obviously, number one is the number one thing you should never do. If you're in a hobby slump. Okay. Number three. The the number three thing you should never do. If you're in a hobby slump. Is watch more YouTube videos. All right. I'm sorry folks. I know a lot of you get motivated. And I've had people uh, message me. And say oh I was inspired by your video. But the key to what I just said. Is not watch YouTube videos. It's to not watch more YouTube videos, okay? Because what happens is watching YouTube videos leads to watching more YouTube videos. And eventually that's all you're doing is watching YouTube videos, right? You're not actually doing any of the stuff you see in the videos. You're just simply watching other people do them. So continue to watch your videos that you watch, you know, continue to, you know, kind of incorporate that into your hobby, but if you are in a slump, absolutely do not start stacking up your subscription queue on YouTube to find more videos to watch because you will find yourself stuck in that in that television or in that that device, right? That computer screen and you will have a hard time of coming out. You will just eventually have hundreds of subscriptions, you know, of YouTube videos. And at, at any given moment, you know, there will be three or four videos on every channel that you haven't watched. Right? I periodically, matter of fact, regularly clean out my subscriptions. If I get more than 50 subscriptions, I scale them back down to about 40. Right. And then when it builds back up to 50, I start scaling them down. The first thing I do is I look for people that haven't put up a, a video in over, you know, two months, right? If it says your last video was two months ago, I'm probably going to unsubscribe because obviously you're, you're not in the hobby right now. You're, 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 you're busy or whatever. The second thing I look for is content, right? If I see somebody that I, I thought was a miniature channel, but they're mostly all board games, right? And they're talking about Euro games this week and they're talking about a card game next week. I'm probably going to unsubscribe. Right. Because that's just stuff I'm watching to be watching something. And I'd rather watch stuff that I can kind of watch while I'm painting and maybe learn a technique. Or I can kind of watch how a rule sets work and learn learn about a set of rules and whether it's something I'd be interested in. But whatever you do, if you are in a slump, do not 
watch even more YouTube videos. Number two, right? The number two of the three things not to do if you're in a hobby slump is put away or put the hobby aside for a while. Now, the only caveat to this is what I said when I began. If you have life issues and you cannot hobby, then there is nothing wrong with putting the hobby aside for a while. Matter of fact, you have to. That's what you that's what you have to do. But if you are in a slump, do not simply put the hobby aside for a while. I've heard people give that advice and that is not good advice. Okay, that is not good advice. That is like telling an athlete, a batter. Well, man, you're in a slump, so why don't you just stop batting for a while? We're going to we're going to uh not let you take any swings and we're going to just let you uh play the outfield and we'll we'll use a designated hitter for you for a few weeks or months. Nobody would do that. No manager or coach would do that because the guy is not going to get better sitting on the bench. He has to swing his way out of it. Because if you leave him on that bench, he's not going to learn the pitches. He's not going to see the pitchers. His confidence isn't going to get better. Nothing. Now, unless he's injured. But if somebody's not injured and they're in a slump, you have to let them hit them their way out of it, right? They have to keep getting up there until they get their groove. And that is the same thing with a hobby slump. If you are in a hobby slump, the worst thing you can do is just, quote, put the hobby aside for a while. Because that one week you put it aside becomes two weeks. That two weeks becomes a month. That month becomes two months. And if you want proof of this, go onto YouTube and look at a lot of the hobby sites that you used to watch. And look at the ones that go a week or two weeks without a video. And next thing you know, it's three months. Right now, I don't know a lot of them. Like I said, maybe life just came up. But a lot of them, on the other hand, they kind of got burnt out with the videos, burnt out with the hobby, and they just dropped it. Right. And so then they show up three months later. Right. So that isn't that is not something you want to do if you want to stay engaged in your hobby. Now, like I said, if you just don't want to do the hobby no more, then go back to one of my other suggestions, you know, and maybe start selling and getting rid of some of your stuff. Right. Maybe that's the problem is you just have too much stuff and it's overwhelming you. But simply saying, oh, I'm just going to put the hobby aside till my inspiration comes back. That's usually not a good idea. You're just going to have long periods of inactivity followed by short periods of, you know, well, I'm back, followed by another long period of inactivity. The number one thing you do not want to do if you are in a hobby slump is buy more stuff. Now, let me repeat that. If you are in a hobby slump, do not buy more stuff. Okay, and I will repeat that one more time. Do not buy more stuff simply because you think it will help you get out of a hobby slump by helping you feel better. Right, that is the worst thing you can do. Because first of all, that... that impulse has nothing to do with the hobby that is a impulse that just about a lot of people feel when they're depressed or when they're down right they will tend to spend money and to shop to make themselves feel better right to give themselves a dopamine rush oh i've got something new and shiny right and that that feeds upon itself it will get to the point where the only way you will ever be able to get out of slumps is by buying something, right? And then that's going to go right back to what I said before, where you wind up with a collection full of stuff that you don't even know, remember or know you have. You wind up with a collection that's totally unorganized. You wind up with a collection that's haphazard. You've got two or three sci-fi things, one little western building you bought, you know, half a half a lot of fantasy stuff and a bulk load of World War II stuff. Right? And you feel overwhelmed by it all. But the worst thing that that is going to do is that is going to tap into money and finances that really don't belong in your hobby. They belong in your home, they belong in your community, they belong for your personal hygiene or clothing, you know, and if you if you are part of a religious community, they belong to your church and your charities, right? You don't take money from those places to buy more hobby stuff because you're feeling down or in a slump. 
Because I guarantee you that is a very quick way to make the people you care about and the loved ones in your family start to resent your hobby. Right. And it is very difficult to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on your hobby and then later on say, well, I'm just going to sell it and get hundreds of dollars back. That's just not how it works. Okay, there are rare times when things go up in value, but typically they don't. And this is the reason. Say you you you're going to buy your fifth a Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones starter set for $125 because the Baratheon faction is out now. The Targaryens are out and oh my God, I got to get them, right? This is just what I need, something fresh to get me back in the hobby is I'm going to get all these Targaryens with these Mongols mounted on them powerful horses and you go pay 125 bucks. Now, you still got the Night's Watch set that you haven't finished, the Free Folk set you haven't finished. You've got the Baratheon set on pre-order that you've already ordered, and you've got your base game. But you got to get the Targaryens, right? That's what you tell yourselves. Well, what happens is, four months later, when you decide, you know what, I'm not going to use these Targaryens. There's nothing but horses in there. Right. And, you know, I don't, I'm not going to ever get around to painting all these horses. I'm going to sell these and get my money back and be responsible. No, you're not. Because now Amazon is selling that Targaryen box set for 62 bucks. So what you paid one hundred and twenty dollars for now, you can sell for something less than 62 bucks. Right. And that happens. over. that will happen over and over again to you until, like I said, you will start noticing a noticeable depletion in the funds that belong elsewhere so if you are in a rut or a slump the first thing and the first rule you have is you know what i'm not going to buy anything else until i get out of this rut or i get out of this slump what you do instead is you make a list Right. So if you're in a rut or a slump and you feel like, you know what, I don't feel like hobbying right now, then don't be buying hobby stuff. Instead, you make a list. You know what? I like that Targaryen set. I'm going to write that down. I like that. Uh, I like that new Infinity Faction. I'm going to write that down. I like that new Frostgrave character. I'm going to write that down. Now, the reason you're writing this stuff down is when you get back to hobbying and say you pull out that that foreground terrain and you say you know what I'm putting this terrain together and that character I saw two weeks ago would be perfect for this I'm gonna go order him right now now you can order him okay right because you're actually bringing the character in as part of doing your hobby right now right you're not buying the character because he's cool and sweet and shiny right and it'll make you feel like you've done something for the hobby well yeah i went and i did some hobby purchasing today that's that's not doing anything for your hobby that's spending money you know you could just about go have a box of popcorn and claim that was for the hobby the point i'm trying to make that's just spending money but if you make a list then you can selectively pull things off that list kind of at the appropriate time. Although the majority of it, I will tell you from experience, you will never end up buying. Just You're just going to scratch it off, right? That's what I do. I keep a list, an Amazon wish list. I write down lists in my home on notepads. And three, four weeks later, when I, I'm starting thinking about buying some of it, most of it I look and say, why did I put that on there, right? I, I, don't, I don't need a Huron war party. Right, I've got some cowboys and a few Indians, but I don't really need this 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 Sioux Nation war party for seventy two dollars. I just need a small band for this scenario I'm going to play. All right. So, like I said again, I will repeat this one last time: Do not buy more stuff if you are in a hobby slump. All right, guys. I'm sorry if that was a little bit long for you, but I wanted to really give you something that was helpful and that was different from what everyone else is talking about and saying. Take care. Good luck. God bless. All right, guys. I almost forgot. I owe you one one honorable mention. I told you I'd throw one bonus in at the end. And the last bonus tip I have for uh, overcoming a hobby slump is revisit some of your old games. 
if you used to play games like Warhammer, Chainmail, Leviathan, Necromunda, Grenadier, Reaper, West Wind, or Dust, you know, shake out those rules, you know, look for some old miniatures or some proxies and revisit some of those games. I mean, <laughs> only because the game is not being supported anymore doesn't mean it's not a good game still. So uh, I was happy to see on, in some of the blogs I fi uh, follow that there there are individuals who are actually pulling some of these games out uh taking a look at them if you want to see what i mean watch uh go to uh ash's page uh website at gorilla miniatures he's real good at uh bringing out old games and doing playthroughs of them which uh i always love to see mordheim all that type of stuff so that's just kind of a fun honorable mention take care god bless